I think these movies force us to not take film so seriously. You know, like, yeah. like we were in grad school and a lot of movies we watched, it was a lot of, you know, how serious this movie is. Even comedies, we always were like, oh, well, look how serious this is. It's talking about this. It's like, yeah, it's great and all. Don't get me wrong. But there's room to just watch the movie and laugh and laugh at it hard uh, and even laugh at it because the movie is constructed in a way that is terrible. Um, and yeah, you could say that's a mean thing. And I think that you have to have that mentality of being okay with demeaning someone's <laughs> work, um, who obviously, you know, they had a, a, an idea that just couldn't execute it. Um, but the thing is to say is that, and I, I would bring this up. I, I, I never criticize someone for making the movie other than Neil Brain. That guy is crazy. Uh, but <laughs> I never criticize anybody who's actually made a film, e- even if it's bad, because they did the thing. They did the movie, and they made the film. They made their movie, and there's something to, to appreciate that. Oh, goody, goody, here it comes. Welcome to the Cinema Psycho Show. You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. <laughs> Oh, my God, don't stop now! With your hosts, Brian, John, and Elaine. Welcome to the Cinema Psycho Show, the madhouse for film freaks and film fans of all types. I'm your host, Brian Cottington, and my fellow co-host and filmmaker, John Woolscroft. I would have thought of something funny, but... Uh, it's the B movie episode, so um, yeah. <laughs> We're like, uh, yeah, not sure what pun we could use for B movies other than just they're bad, but they're good. Yay! I just thought it'd be better to fail, you know. <laughs> just thought it'd be better to fail, yeah. Oh, but you went in thinking that it was great, right? Like that's oh that's yeah, the key. exactly, exactly. You totally were like, oh yeah, I was man. making the greatest masterpiece of all time. My yeah. opening joke, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. But anyway, uh, we're on episode two twenty one, uh, which is crazy. This is crazy. I, like I was, I was putting together our our Batman and Robin episode that that just went out. I mean, we batch record this shit. I'm not, everyone kind of knows that. Um, so what? I just put it out today, uh, and I was like, "Fuck, two hundred and twenty episodes." Uh, and that one was kind of a landmark because we kind of closed out Batman, the 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 Tim Burton Schumacher. Uh, you know, started off good, turned into a clusterfuck, you know, series. Um, that started in episode one, so like that's it's kind of a big deal. And now we're on episode two twenty one. Um, and kind of keeping in line with shitty films, <laughs> uh, we thought we would talk a little bit about a, a topic that I think is kind of near and dear to both our hearts. And I know that it's something that I think certain film people will get. But then the most of the general public may not. <laughs> and that is specifically why we love bad movies. When I'm talking about bad movies, I'm not talking about like movies that have, I don't know, like Batman and Robin. That's a bad movie. And I don't, but I don't think any of us love it, right? You don't love it, do you? Uh, I mean, like in a sick ass perverse way kind of <laughs> oh. oh man really i really? mean it hurts me because of what they did to the you know to batman but at the same time i i do laugh my ass off at the incompetence of the whole thing but uh yeah but yeah yeah i i don't i don't love that movie at all uh, but there are some movies out there that, you know, are clearly terrible. And when I mean terrible, I mean, like, production values god-awful, uh, acting's god-awful. But there's just something. There is a, a, a charm, a spark, if you will, that exists within the movie that we become gigantic fans over. So we're talking about movies like Troll 2 and The Room and... Um, Man, like Frankenhooker, for instance. I was watching Frankenhooker a couple days ago. And, and like, 
those are movies that are clearly bad <laughs> and clearly have issues um, on technical merit, but it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? So, um, and it's something that, like, my wife and I kind of go back and forth in this, and, and she is someone who has told me, she's like, I love, I like B-movies, but her whole thing is, is time, and I completely get it, because when you have kids and you have a job and things like that, your time is extra valuable, and you don't want to waste your time on a shit film, you know? Um, yeah. So, she's very much like... If I'm not into it based off of like the first five seconds, I don't I don't want to watch it. Um, whereas I have no problem and can justify like watching a terrible movie and say like, you know what? Yeah, I maybe have seen Frankenhooker like a thousand times because I have. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I can justify be like, it's still a good time. Like, I'm always going to have a good time with it, even though, like, you know, I know it's not great. Um it's kind of like I, I've always said that that watching a B movie is like eating fast food. It's good. It's just not, you know, nutritious ever. Yeah, you, you're gonna maybe have a stomach ache when it's over, but you know, you had a good time eating it. No, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but one thing to note too is that when we're talking B movie here, we're not talking like you know, uh, you know, Swamp Thing. We're not talking Friday the Thirteenth Part Two. You know, no. we're, we're talking about. Really, the crap of the crap. You know, yes. we're talking Birdemic. Yeah, like you said, Troll 2, et cetera. Um, shout out to George Hardy. <laughs> and Darren Ewing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, so we're, we're, we're really talking not about, like, cult movies, but just the bad of the bad. And, yeah, I've experienced that quite a bit. You know, it, it's a select audience of people that want to sit through a really terrible movie you Mm -hmm. know and it's usually a crowd kind of thing where you know if you can get seven to ten people together and usually there's cocktails involved and (laughs) kind of you know has to be cocktails involved that's how you get through it (laughs) And, and kind of mocking the movie as you go then there is something that can actually like you know help it through that you know one of the hardest things for this show is when I've had to watch a Neil Breen movie oh, by man. myself. <laughs> by I told, my... I, oh, I've told you that. I've said yeah. that that every one of his films, I no doubt probably would have had more enjoyment uh, had it been around you and even Lane and anyone else and just watch the movie as a, as a group because, you know, half the time you're sitting there like I guess for, with me like I'm my wife has already said I'm not watching these crap films with you <laughs> <laughs> and, and she's much smarter than me on that regard yeah. um, but but you know I, it's it's kind of uh, hard to sit there and watch a real terrible film like a Neil Breen film by yourself um, I remember when we watched um, what the hell was it uh, Daddy Derek and his his film exploits uh in cool <laughs> cat saves a kid and and it was hard it was really hard to watch it because with that one i actually had headphones on i had my laptop in front of me i was watching i'm like man this is hard to watch and it's really difficult and i think there is something to be said about you know b movies are best enjoyed if you get enjoyment out of these sorts of films um when it's done collectively you know there are a lot of movies you can watch there by yourself um, but, but B movies, you, you have to have a group, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause a lot of times that if there's nothing, I would say overly elaborately wrong with it, like say bird demic where you, you can show that to anybody and like the, the bird special effects, like yeah. they can laugh at, like, if there's not that and it's just the production value and the acting like where people are like, I don't get what's entertaining about this. Like, um, I yeah. still hate that fucking movie, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I still hate. But here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. When we watched it for your 30th uh, birthday uh, at the Hollywood Theater in Dormont, uh, I actually enjoyed that experience over um <laughs> over over watching it at any other time because we had to watch it for the show when we did the pandemic episode i i'm just telling you like i i had more enjoyment 
when we were in a group setting <laughs> than uh, when uh, you know we had to we had to watch it uh, in per- it by ourselves. That was that was the thing. So you weren't put through shock and terror? <laughs> no, I was put through what the fuck is this thing? Like, that's the thing. And and here's the thing. I use Birdemic. No joke. I use Birdemic in my class classes because I, I teach uh, film and video for, for, for two different colleges. And whenever we're talking about audio, no joke, um, I pull... That scene, the first, the diner scene where we first meet, what's his face? Uh, and we have that bizarro audio exchange that happens where it's just a woman saying, hi, and it's, it's cut off and just garbage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people have headphones on, dude. Like, they probably just heard that. Um, uh, but, but yeah, so like, I use that as an example, and I've what I've done with it is actually kind of kind of interesting. Is I'll play that, and then I'll play the uh, I did not do it, I did not scene from the room. And what I I bring across is that content can be garbage, but your audio should be good. Like you watch the room, and yes, it's garbage. It's a garbage film uh, written by an insane person. Um, but. <laughs> It's in focus. It sounds good. You're not distracted by that. Um, so, like, I, I bring that up as an example. I show in my for my students. I'm like, this is why you got to pay attention to audio because it doesn't matter what your content is. You're you're taken out of the the world of the film by bad audio. See, learnings, <laughs> learning things. I'm learning things right now. No, but I, I, well, what's funny is my students are like, I can't believe I actually had a class where you know you showed me a bad film as an example. <laughs> like, who's who says yeah? In my my film class, we showed Birdemic. I'm like, eh, hey, you know. <laughs> you know, as much as it's important to watch, like you know, Citizen Kane and The Godfather and all that yeah. good stuff, like it, it's it's good to see the bad end of things, like where people have failed, you know, uh, absolutely. That's even maybe absolutely. even more educational. <laughs> yeah. Now you bring up a very good point. And I'm actually glad you, you mentioned that is that would we call these movies failures? Because well, obviously we're talking about them. Obviously they, they've had a legacy. Um, but if, if they have a legacy and they're, they're infamous, is that a failure though? You know, I mean, it not to get esoteric on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking at pure success, like you you can't deny that, like, Tommy Wiseau has not turned a decent profit off of the room. You know, oh, totally. It, he has. Yeah. It, if you're looking at true, you know, artistic critique, then then, yes, they are failures. You know, it, it's a hard thing to say because, you know, something like the room um and if <laughs> dear listeners if you haven't seen the room you know you uh, pause this don't turn it off never turn us off pause it and then go watch the room and then come back yep. to us um hi welcome back uh hi welcome back <laughs> <laughs> but you know um yeah it, it it's a success in its failure which makes it not a failure yeah. any longer but at the same time if you're if you're not a fan of this stuff and you're actually critiquing it, you know, um, from the ground up, then yeah, absolutely, it is it, a monumental um, failure. I, yeah, it, it's so difficult to say. It, and that's that's the thing I think I think the thing about it is I don't necessarily consider these films failures. I don't because the the way I kind of I mean one critics and we're 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 technically critics. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're not film twats, uh, but we're we're technically critics. And the thing is, is that you know, I I kind of judge a movie on two tracks. Okay, uh, one is how how is it artistically supporting the craft, right? You know, we watch a movie like Citizen Kane, uh, which everyone kind of jumps to that one. But but even a film like Psycho, which you know, obviously done by a a, a you know a terrible human being. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock, sorry, he was the Harvey Weinstein of the 60s. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> you know, y- you watch a movie like that, 
And there are so many technical things you could pull from it, so many story things you could pull from it and be like, oh, yeah, this is totally a success. But at the same time, the way I also judge a movie by success is how memorable is it? Because I think nowadays there are so many movies that come out where we watch them and we're just like, oh, yeah, it looks good and it has an okay plot. And, yeah, it has some okay acting but am I going to remember this movie in 10 years? And oh, the answer most... Yeah, so that's, many movies where that's so a many, no. Like, like honestly, uh, I saw Pacific Rim uh, ri- Uprising or whatever the fuck it was, and, like, the sequel to it, and, yeah, it had good effects. Yeah, it had okay acting. Yeah, it had okay story. I don't remember a damn thing about it. But I can tell you this. I remember the entire plot of Troll 2. I remember the entire <laughs> plot of the room, uh, and I could I could even tell you exactly you know certain scenes pulled out of Birdemic. Um, so, and, and, it, and honestly, that's that maybe is because I've watched them a couple more times. Not Birdemic. I only want to watch it when we have to talk about it. Um, but you know, shock and terror. There there is something to be said about whether these films are successes based on their impact on society and i think that's the thing is everybody knows for the most part if you talk if i talk to my students i'm like oh who here has seen troll 2 they'll all raise their hands but at the same time you know i've said uh who here has has heard of the movie uh, rear window and i'll get blank stares and that's a good movie like rear window is a great film um but Everybody knows Troll 2. Everyone knows The Room. Everyone knows who Tommy Wiseau is. So by that measure, they are successes. You know? Yeah. See, I thought you were going to say, like, more random ass movies like John Travolta and White Man's Burden. (laughs) (laughs) White Man's Burden? (laughs) What the fuck is that? (laughs) <laughs> it's a movie where white people are black people <laughs> and it's no like, it, no yeah, it came out like nine is it a real movie yeah you're yeah. not just being uh being you know somewhat racist this is a real film oh no 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 i'm not being racist at all no this is a real movie <laughs> no it's not you can't it's not I, oh man i gotta look this up because that sounds <laughs> terrible like really really bad um yeah. but anyway i you know, I, I think there is something to be to be said when we're talking about these B movies that even though they critically are f- fucking god awful, um, they've managed to do what most films can't do nowadays, and that is be memorable for generations. I, I guarantee you that movie a movie like The Room in twenty years is still gonna be remembered the same way that it's remembered now. Guarantee you that. You know, it, but it it is, but it's it's by a select audience. You know, we, we can't say that like, you know, um, bad, truly bad movies are you know uh, mainstream. You know, it's mainstream in the same the way that like professional wrestling is mainstream. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah, that's, or, good, that's good, good analogy. Yeah, or ho- like spe- specific horror movies, or you know, something like that, like. It, it still is niche. It's it's not as niche as it used to be, be thanks to like you know the internets. But you yeah, know, it really is a select audience. You know, there are so many people, and and Lane's one of them that does not enjoy <laughs> bad movies. Like I, you know, I'm sitting there laughing my ass off. Like when we watched you know the Last Vampire on Earth, and she's looking at me like you know what. What the fuck are we doing with our lives? <laughs> yeah, Lauren gives me that look all the time. She's just like, "Why? Why are you watching these movies? Like, why? Why do you need to watch this film?" I said, "You don't understand. You just don't get it. Sometimes you need to have your fast food burger and your filet mignon. Okay, <laughs> got to have both. There are times when both are necessary. Um, but at, at the same time, like, I think there are some movies. Like, obviously, Last Vampire on Earth is is one of those ones that." I didn't know about <laughs> and I I like my my terrible cinema um, but you know I knew what Troll 2 was I knew what the room was I know who Tommy Wiseau is so 
I think it's wider than it used to be. I think it's way wider of a, a cultural zeitgeist than it used to be. Um, but yeah, I mean, well, let me ask you this, because this is kind of a good good jumping off point from that. When did you get into B-movies? When were you like, oh yeah, I totally buy this? You know, I think it was the mid... 2000s when I actually I saw uh, the room uh, yeah. maybe like 2007 2008 and then because uh, you know obviously we had all seen bad movies and I had seen um, you know uh, Planet Nine from Outer Space and things like that you know mm-hmm. but I thought it was like oh oh bad movies are from like the 50s when they didn't yeah. have any money or time you know blah 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 you know and I saw this and I was like oh, there's a whole world that I'm missing out on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it was, uh, thank you, Tommy Wiseau. And, <laughs> and then I, I went out of my way to see as many bad movies as I possibly could, thanks yeah. to thanks to The Room. Yeah, yeah. For, for me, it was much earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I've mentioned before that, that and I, know, I, I have a feeling that I'm not alone in this, that for my generation, our main outlet, was HBO like that that was it that was it HBO yeah. and VHS tapes those were your our, our main outlet for discovering movies um, our younger audience is not going to understand that concept uh, but for for us us you know elder Millennials uh, we'll get it we'll totally get it um, but for me I discovered bad films uh, with troll 2 and it was the weirdest thing because I, I remember that it, they played it on HBO uh, in the early 90s, uh, like right after it, it, I think it probably played it, I guess, like 91 or 92. Well, when did that movie come out? They came out the movie came out in 90. So, yeah, yeah it 90, must have been around 91, 92 when they had, it had played on HBO. And I remember watching this movie. I'm just like, this is fucking insane. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and I'm just like, I have to keep watching it. It was one of those things where it's like it, it would come on on TV on HBO. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm watching this now. And for the longest time, I didn't know what the name of the movie was. I just remembered that it was about these creatures that turned people into green goo and they ate them. And some woman, you know, kind of molests a, a corn uh, stalk and then it turns into popcorn. And, you know, uh, a kid with a Batman poster, because I was like, that kid has a Batman poster. Knowing what I know now, that totally would not fly um, <laughs> because you kind of can get in trouble for that. Um, but you know, he had a Batman, but I'm like, oh yeah, I had that same poster. Um, the Keaton Batman with Batmobile. I'm like, I had that same poster. So I, I knew this movie and it was in my, my, my bones for the longest time, but I didn't know what the name of it was. Uh, and I remember that it, again, this is probably the same as you, John it was like maybe early two thousands. Uh, back in the day we had this thing, uh, on the internet, uh, called Yahoo answers. And I don't think it exists anymore. Um, well, well, slow down, Brian. What is the internet? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But but in yeah, I like to call this like Internet 1.0 because like at the at the the turn of the 2000s it was like oh yeah you gotta have Web 2.0. Ugh. Um, but but yeah. So back in the the early days of of kind of the internet, there was this thing on Yahoo called Yahoo Answers, and it was kind of like a kind of like Reddit before Reddit. And uh, I remember that I was I literally I, for whatever reason thought about this movie and I was like, I literally typed in a, a, a question on Yahoo Answers. I was like, hey, anyone remember, anyone remember this movie from like 1990 with this little kid and, you know, these creatures kind of, you know, eat his mom at the end. And sure enough, someone posted like, oh, yeah, that's Troll 2. So like. That like as soon as I had the name, I'm like, oh my god, that's the fucking movie, uh, and and it just kind of kickstarted me on really searching out these other films, um, and the, with the room because you brought up the room, I discovered that on Adult Swim in I think it was probably 2005, 2006, because Adult Swim for April Fool's Day one year, I forget what the year was, but they took over their entire block. And played the room <laughs> as a joke. I remember that. Yeah, and I remember like I remember like because I would always watch Aqua Teen Hunger Force. That was my show, and 
you know, I would want to watch that. And I was like, what the fuck is this dumbass movie on Adult Swim? And uh, like, what what the hell is this? And I just kept watching. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And that that was kind of my introduction to the room. Um, but yeah, man, I, early two thousands, man. That was when you discovered your movies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I, I think with these kind of movies too, you you need to have like a very very sardonic and almost semi cruel sense of humor because oh, yeah, it, totally. it, there's a lot of schadenfreude that goes into <laughs> schadenfreude <laughs> liking these movies yeah. yeah i mean it's it's one of those things that it you know if you don't like dark comedies i think that's the key thing here is if you don't like dark comedies uh you you just you just won't get these movies you just will not get them um you know, Frank and Hooker, Basket Case, uh, pretty much any uh, Frank Cannon Lauder film. Those are typically B movies, but they, they always have dark humor in them. Uh, and it's it's one of those ones that you, if you don't get it, if you're like someone who gets offended by a movie like Cable Guy, uh, you're you're not going to enjoy Troll 2. You're not going to enjoy The Room. Um, you you kind of have to have that. And you also have to be willing to make fun of the film and make fun of people in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can't be thinking about the overall plot in these movies. And how does this character... Like, I don't think anyone goes like, oh, yeah, I really feel for Tommy's character in the room. No one does that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but just like, why is he such an idiot in this? <laughs> he did not hit her. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know there there is like, uh, I would say a separation between high budget and no budget. Like, I I think that some people would have a harder time, even though it's it's, it's so easy in my opinion. Like making fun of like say Catwoman, you oh, know, yeah. with Halle Berry as compared to like The Room or Troll Two, because those are obviously made for no money and so it's easier to be like oh well this is you know this is crap as compared to something that was made for probably 50 million dollars and that failed you know yeah. uh, it's it's so much easier when like the little guy <laughs> fails to, well, to, to mock him well with that said what what do you think makes a good b movie <sighs> what do you think like because i think there have been times when we've seen i, I don't want to I mean, I'll, I'll call this this. They're they're almost manufactured to be terrible, like movies that are purposefully made to be B movies. Yeah, and I they, don't count those. They no. always, but they always fucking fail every single time. Every single time that I've seen a movie that's been manufactured to be god awful, it fails. It fails, you know, one critically. Uh, because they're already trying to like you know hit that hey we're we're terrible, but it also fails on the whole like authenticity of a B film because you you know people are smart especially people who who really love these B films they can see through the bullshit um, like nobody's business and they can tell when they're when they're being kind of you know uh, sold to so I I I think that those manufactured ones definitely they don't count and they also. Uh, always seem to fail but what do you think john actually makes a good b movie well it's interesting that you should say like just to piggyback on what you just said there yeah. like my um you know i i've always talked about the merits of like terrible movies like to say to my mom and she's like oh i saw a really terrible movie growing up and i'm like what's that and she's like attack of the killer tomatoes and i said well that movie was designed to be yeah. like bad you know it, like it was supposed to be kitsch and you know and humorous and she was like wait they they purposely made it bad i'm like yeah, th yeah this wasn't a failure of a movie like they succeeded in making you know a craptastic movie but um but I, I don't know like it's so helpful i think when there that there's something obvious in the movie that anyone can, can latch on to you know it if it's not nuance based, so to speak, yeah. like, you know, like Tommy Wiseau's performance or the birds in Birdemic or, you know, uh, 
the the goblins and and goblin too. I'm sorry, troll too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know something that is so easy that you can point your finger at and say that's the problem. That's the problem right there. You know, or bad audio or bad editing. Like sometimes it's more, you know, uh, person to person. Like you know whether you know this succeeds or that doesn't. You know. You know, I I guess I'm talking about the more failures on a Hollywood level. Right. Yeah. You know. I, I I think for me, I think one of the core things that, that makes a, a, a B movie a B movie, it makes it good, uh, is the whole idea of a filmmaker r- reaching beyond what is possible <laughs> budget wise and concept wise. Uh, yeah. And going for something greater and failing completely. Um, if the filmmaker is like, yeah, I just want to make a craptastic film, it doesn't work. But if the filmmaker says, I want to make Citizen Kane and I have, you know, uh, $50 and a piece of string. But his <laughs> mindset or her mindset is, I want to make Citizen Kane. I can guarantee you that the movie they produce is going to be a B movie. And it's going to be one that that people will love um, because the, the filmmaker is bought into the concept. And if you don't have that, uh, then then it fails, you know. And and I found that, like, that level of sincerity and that level of egoism mm-hmm. has that is more than anything what leads to these kind of movies like. Neil Breen thinks he's changing the world. Tommy Wiseau thought he was the next Tennessee Williams. You know, <laughs> uh, yeah. A lot of these guys are like, you know, I'm going to change the world of cinema because yeah. I'm a genius. You know, and it's that level of sincerity that that we're laughing at. And I mean, perhaps that's cruel that, you know, th- these is. guys thought they were changing <laughs> the world. You know, and we're laughing our ass off at their movie because yeah. um, I went to. uh the eerie horror fest. Uh, yeah. My my buddy Dom Del Greco was in a uh, movie shot by uh, Jason McCann, uh, a yeah. short film, and it was all done on uh, sixteen millimeter film, which I thought, oh, that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. cool. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, it played before one of the features, so I went and to check it out, and you know, and it was pretty good. Um, and but right after it. You know, the guy who was in the, the feature film, like, or the director, I should say, like, you know, did this huge impassioned speech, like, this is a big, you know, film that we all believed in, you know, that we didn't think could happen, blah, 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 you know, and, you know, got this huge round of applause. And then the movie came on and it had all of the things you would expect from, like, The Room or Troll 2. You know, and people were snickering in the crowd. Everybody's trying to be respectful, but kind of like laughing their ass off at the bad audio, bad acting, you know, plot that didn't make any sense. And Dom (laughs) was sitting with his dad in there (laughs) and they were mocking this movie like between each other. But what they didn't realize is the one of the lead actresses from the movie was sitting next. Oh, to them. no. <laughs> oh, she, no. And she got up and left before the movie was over. And they're like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's horrible. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it, it, it's the same thing, right? Yeah. Everybody believes in that film. Everybody involved with that film believes in it. But execution wise, it doesn't work, you know, so I think that's that's what separates a movie like uh, what the fuck Sharknado, which I can't stand. I can't stand any of them. How do, I, I can't I can't watch them. Um, my stepson's got into them a little bit and I'm just like, these are not good. Uh, and just not good on multiple levels, because obviously the Sharknado series is trying to be a B movie. It knows what it is, and that's part of the problem. Is you can't know what you are to be a B movie. <laughs> you have to you have to think that you are creating something of merit and something that's really good. Um, that's why, like Troll Two, if you talk to the director Claudio Fragrasso, he he said in interviews, "I was trying to make a movie about the American Family Unit and how strong the American Family Unit is." 
But it's fucking goblins eating vegetarian goblins. How the fuck do you get that? So, like, you you cannot go in and think I'm going to create a B-movie. You just can't. Uh, I feel bad for that actress who sat next to next to your friend. Um, but at the same time, like, that movie probably is going to be infamous. I mean, I don't know if they ever, ever screened it anywhere else. Um, but that movie would probably have legs as a cult or B-movie because... Obviously, everyone involved cared, you know, um, that's why I think trauma is able to do so well is that they're they're They know exactly what they're making. But at the same time, every film they seem to make seems to have that heart and seems to have that desire to be better, um, even if it's ridiculous. That's why movies like Poltergeist and The Toxic Avenger, uh, you know, those I, I do you consider those B movies. No, um, because I, really? I do think because I I think that like you said that when there's a purposefulness to something, it uh, it doesn't re- you know trauma is going out of their way to make schlock. I guess is the word that I would that's that's the word describe it use. as yeah, and you know if the, if they are purposely doing that then i i don't think that i would consider those you know b movies i don't know i i think they're a little bit different i think they're a little bit different than that um just because at least fr- from from what i've seen you know I, I don't think they they cut corners i don't think they've ever cut corners when it comes to delivering what they're delivering yeah it, it you know you know, I I don't really think of Poltergeist, and you know that that one. You know, you clearly have you know puppets and things like that in there. Um, but it, it it just doesn't feel to me like it like the same way that you would watch like a um you know Sharknado, where it's clearly manufactured. You know what I mean? I think there's yeah. I think that I think you, if anything you could say that maybe trauma is kind of the gray area between purely manufactured sci-fi channel crap um, or from the orphanage, not the, yeah, not the orphanage, but uh, the asylum, the asylum studio. Um, <laughs> I wish they were called the orphanage. That would actually, no, be that's, that's an FX. Stu- no, orphanage <laughs> was an FX studio. Um, but, but yeah, the asylum, you know, they're the ones who produce all these sci-fi channel crap films and they're purely manufactured. Um, but I think you could say that trauma kind of falls in that gray area between, you know, pure driven by the director, driven by some overarching vision like Tommy Wiseau and Claudio Fergrasso and even Ed Wood uh, on one end and the other end kind of being the manufactured crap. Um, so they're kind of like in the middle because I don't think Lloyd Kaufman is is trying to be the asylum. I don't think he's like, oh, yeah, I have to make, you know, this type of film. <laughs> to put on the sci-fi channel. I just, I don't see them that way. No, yeah, cuz uh, cuz the Toxic Avenger like kicks ass. <laughs> I love that movie. Yeah. I love that movie. I don't care. It's ridiculous. It's over the top. And yeah, you could say it's more like, you know, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, but it's still so good. It's still amazing. Um even the sequels to it are pretty pretty good. Not as good as the original, but still pretty damn good. Um Now I guess guess what I could uh, you know ask of of course you know what are some of your favorites John? Well, the obvious ones um, that we've mentioned a couple of times, you know, uh, the Broom, Troll Mm Two, you know, Birdemic, uh, Samurai Cop is one that should not be missed. You know, I've never seen Samurai Cop. Oh, I've never seen it. I've never seen it. Yeah, do yourself a favor and check that one out. Yeah. You, you will not be disappointed. Um, it has everything in it that you would expect. <laughs> um, of course. Yeah. Of course. It does. <laughs> Miami Connection is a oh good one. Oh, my God. Yeah. That one I didn't know about until we saw it at Row House. Oh, yeah? Oh, okay. Yeah, that was my yeah. first time watching it was when we did the whole, like, uh, live show thing intro into to, at Row House. Um, yeah, I had never seen that. I've just been told about it. I was like, I probably should watch this. And that was, you know, I watched it, um, before we did kind of our little intro thing. I'm like, man, it is a fucking crazy ass film. I just, I never got into to kung fu movies, you know? 
Yeah. Makes sense. Um, and on the big budgeted end, I would say, you know, look at I Know Who Killed Me with Lindsay Lohan. Um, <laughs> oh, that one. I never saw that one. I never saw oh. You consider that a B movie? Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. It, yeah, it's a B movie with a budget, you know, but yeah, it's Lindsay Lohan like sleepwalking her way through rehab, you know, in that one. And <laughs> Jesus. Uh, you know, things like Catwoman, if you're looking for more like big budget thing, obviously Batman and Robin, you know, you can check our last week's episode <laughs> for our, our look. I don't on get that. any joy out of that. That's not a that's not a movie. <laughs> that's just god awful. It's just god awful <laughs> shit. Makes you angry. Made me angry. <laughs> and well, obviously here's, anything well, here's by Neil Breen. Oh, yeah. oh fuck that guy. Uh, <laughs> uh, but well, here's the thing. I, I mentioned this like in the 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 uh, write up to the Batman and Robin one. Um, but what I found hilarious about and I didn't mention this it when we did the episode was that Batman and Robin is the fear that fanboys of Batman had in 1988 when Michael Keaton was a, uh, a cast. Yeah, yeah. Like I thought about it afterwards. I'm like. This is the fear. This is what they were afraid they were going to get. <laughs> was a campy, god awful mix mixture of puns and terrible writing, and you know Uma Thurman's wigs and back credit cards, all the shit that everyone thought they were going to get from the '60s TV show. That's what Batman and Robin is. But I get no joy. That's not a B movie. That's just bad. Shouldn't exist. Um. Although there is an argument to say that if you didn't have Batman and Robin, you wouldn't have the MCU or Blade or X-Men or even Spider-Man because you had to hit rock bottom somehow. <laughs> well, you also wouldn't have the Christopher Noel- Nolan Batman movies no, without you, Batman you wouldn't. and Robin. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. So there is something to be said for that. Sometimes um, you need to hit rock bottom, you know, <laughs> and that is that I think that that is the rock bottom there. Um, but. Yeah, it's good. Good picks there. My favorites, obviously, I I really have like a, a core. Um, I don't have too many, but uh, obviously, I love Troll Two. Uh, this is my first first terrible film. Uh, I love uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Like I don't know if you would call that a B movie. I call it a B movie because it's it's kind of terrible. <laughs> it's it's tough. It's tough. It's a tough uh, one. one. Yeah. Um, I I I also love you know the room. Um, as well as, uh, what the hell? There's another one that I was thinking about. Shit. Oh, Justin to Kelly. No, no, no. (laughs) So there was this one movie and I remember seeing this movie at uh, a horror film festival and it's called bad biology and it's from Frank Henenlotter and it's over the top ridiculous. And I know, I don't know if you would call it a B movie because I think Frank Henenlotter knows exactly what he's creating. But I still love it. I still love the movie. <laughs> uh, there's a scene where this this rapper is doing a music video, and I'm not even kidding you when I tell you this. The women around him have ultra realistic silicone vagina masks on. Oh, this is a real movie. It's about these two people who have overactive sex sex glands and overactive sex genitals like this one guy has a penis that has a mind of its own <laughs> and I'm, not, I'm not even kidding don't you. they like, all <laughs> no 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 but like it's over the top ridiculous i i i couldn't believe uh watch this movie that that it existed Wait, um, is it kind of like venom with tom hardy like <laughs> Venom when it's not out is constantly talking to him in his head. Is that it, like it no. Well no. Well it's it's talking to but you but it does you don't hear it talking. He's the actor who's 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 playing the the main character, he kind of talks to it. Um but it it's a ridiculous film. Um check it out. But I I I don't I, I consider that kind of a B movie because it's fucking terrible. But I I don't know what else to categorize it as. It doesn't seem like a manufactured one. It seems like this is Frank Hannenlauter's thing. And if you've watched movies like Frankenhooker, you get that. <laughs> you get that. Um, so maybe it falls kind of more in that gray area of the trauma land. Um, but either way, like I love that movie. I think it's hilarious. Um, 
you know, there's so many good ones out there. Uh, I, I, Geely, Hobgoblins. Hobgoblins is one you introduced me to. And yeah, that's a great boom B movie. A Nazi incest goblin things, you know, somehow that works. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of good ones. Um, now, just as kind of a closer to this, uh, what do you would what would you say to people who don't get these films? What would you say to try to convince them to give them a shot? Because I think there is something to be said for for even the person who is like, eh, I don't really care for B movies. What do you think they're going to get out of this if they give these movies a shot? Well, it it's similar to like horror movies for people that like I don't like to be scared, I don't like to be you know shocked, I don't like blood, you know, like there there is something out there for anyone in you know in the world of of horror and i think there is something out there for anybody you know in the world of um you know the these type of b movies you know and sometimes you know you need to have the most ridiculous version of something for somebody to to latch on to it like you know as i as i mentioned a couple of times now catwoman while a piece of shit and it easy really to just laugh your it's ass a, it's off. It's a dirty ass cat turd. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure that Halle Berry took a dump in a box. And it like, um, is it? I'd watch. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> is it that movie though? Does have a Hollywood budget behind it? So you know, maybe they have a harder time. Did they think? Oh, this is just a bad, you know, Hollywood movie. I don't want to watch this, but you know, maybe something like a birdemic, you know, where it's it's so outrageously over the top and it's incompetence that maybe something like that would get somebody's attention. And, and as I would, you know, as we brought up on this episode, I would say, you know, watching these movies with a group of people like, you know, uh Troll two by yourself might not be that enjoyable, but it's, if you're, I mean, the, I find it enjoyable, but I know yeah. that <laughs> I'm an oddball in that. But yeah, well, George Hardy would be like, "It's the worst movie ever made." <laughs> I think he even said that on our show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But you know, like, yeah, if you have a movie theater full of other people, or you know, at your house and you got twelve people with you, and everybody's been drinking and just you know laughing and jeering at the screen, no, it's. We've we've all become mystery science theater. We've all become yeah. riff tracks, you know, and yeah. like, that is what I think makes those kind of movies enjoyable. It's and you also have to come to terms with reveling and failure, which I have no problem with. But some uh, some people do. I think these movies force us to not take film so seriously. You know, like, yeah. like we were in grad school and a lot of the movies we watched, it was all, a lot of, you know, how serious this movie is even comedies we always were like oh well look how serious this is it's talking about this it's like yeah it's great and all don't get me wrong but there's room to just watch the movie and laugh and laugh at it hard uh and even laugh at it because the movie is constructed in a way that is terrible um and yeah, you could say that's a mean thing, and I think that you have to have that mentality of being okay with demeaning someone's <laughs> work. Um, who obviously, you know, they had a, a an idea that just couldn't execute it. Um, but the thing is to say is that, and I, I would bring this up. I, I I never criticize someone for making the movie other than Neil Brain. That guy is crazy. Uh, but <laughs> I never criticize anybody who's actually made a film, e- even if it's bad, because they did the thing. They did the movie, and they made the film. They made their movie, and there's something to, to appreciate that. But it's fair game if, if with your content. you know, It's fair game if you're acting, and you have to get some enjoyment out of them somehow. Um, so I, I honestly think that, that these movies – Really, more than anything, as you mentioned, John, they they force us to be communal <laughs> and not be isolated uh, when watching a film. I don't think, you know, I, as I said, you can't watch these movies by yourself. It's just, it's horrible. Um, but it forces you to really respect communal watching and communal watching of, of media. 
um, because you have to have that back and forth. And we've had, you know, parties at your place, John, you know, I, I look forward to the whole watching a film and ripping on it with friends. That's yeah. part of the experience. That's that's the whole thing, you know, is to kind of go back and forth and put in your own lines for ridiculous things that happen. That's that's the 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 experience. That's that's part of the film make, film watching experience. So it forces you and what I would tell anyone is give these movies a shot. Yeah, they're god awful. But at the same time, if you're bored one night and you don't have anything else to watch and you've got a group of friends around you and you're like, yeah, I don't want to put on Avengers for the 50th time or some other Marvel film, throw one of these films on and just have a good laugh, you know, and enjoy watching a film with people you care about, people you're friends with, uh, especially nowadays. Kind of need that nowadays. <laughs> You know, and I would say to any aspiring filmmaker, you can learn just as much about what not to do from that's, a birdemic that you can that's from why a Citizen I, Kane. That's why <laughs> I show it. Yeah. That's why I show them. Because you know what? It, it's easy to pick out the failures and say, oh, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> um, you know, and, and kind of go from there. So, yeah, you know what? I, I tell any film student, watch these bad movies. Don't just watch the good films that that you know are you're you're told are great. Um, definitely watch them, know about them, so you can talk about them at parties. Uh, but you know, watch the bad films because you will learn lessons from those failures. Um, and again, with the bad movies, you cannot fault them on drive. I think that's the key thing. There is no filmmaker who makes a bad movie is lacking in drive. They know what they're making. Uh, well, they actually, they, they don't know what they're making, but they know what concept they're trying to make. They're reaching beyond their means, um, and they have a vision. You can't say they don't have a vision. You know? Yeah. Look at Mano's Hands of Fate. That man made that movie on a bet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's We still haven't exactly... reviewed that one. We still haven't yeah. reviewed that one. That's, that's Oh, one it's we so have hard to, to get through. It's so still hard to, to get that through. One. We still have to check that uh, one. Uh, Good yeah. talk, John. Yes. Great talk. That good, was good talk. talk. Good talk. So we love bad movies. And if you have a bad film, you should contact us. <laughs> it's at thecyclechow.com. <laughs> uh, but before I get to our, our little pitch thing at the end, uh, John, uh, where are you at on the social medias? Uh, the Unreal the J. Woolies. I'm also on Facebook. Um, and, uh, you know, check out the YouTube channel at J. Dubs Video and Asties. I'm, Anything I'm, new coming up? Oh, yeah. I'm getting right into the um, spooky season, Ooh, uh, which yeah. for me is September 1st through you know mid-November. Or as Brian, as you said, should be all year. It's all uh, year. <laughs> there's, there's no beginning or end. It's it's all day, every day. Well, uh, in terms of riding the, the holiday wave, yeah, I have a bunch of interviews coming out, yeah. including one here hopefully on September 1st. Um, if I can get it uploaded and there's no issues. And... Um, yeah, all through all that time, I've got interviews and, and uh, so many questions on horror movies and check-ins awesome. and stuff. So, yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, you can find me at, at Brian Connington. I also run the Psycho Show page. Uh, be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Psycho Show. Uh, you can also find us on the Epcast Network at EpcastNetwork.com. Also, be sure to check out our YouTube-centric show, our, 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 our little extra bit. Uh, called From the Concession Stance on YouTube. It's also uh, a bonus episode that gets put out uh, every other week on this podcast, uh, RSS feed, so check that out. Yay. From the Concession Stand, or I'll go to our YouTube channel, at Psycho Show. Um, if you have a favorite movie or question you want to throw away, or maybe you really hate B-movies and you want to let us know, uh, you can contact us at cinemapsychoshow.com. Uh, and be sure to follow or subscribe to us wherever you listen to audio, and we will see you next time. I did not hit her. She's lying. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Brian. <laughs> <laughs>